Carbon is the most vital element for living things because all living organisms are constructed from compounds of carbon. Structures as diverse as the cell membrane, the bark of a tree, the lens of the eye, and the white of an egg are composed of carbon compounds. Carbon, combined with hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen in many different quantities and geometric arrangements, results in approximately 1.7 million compounds. One of the most significant properties of carbon is its ability to form chains very easily by lining carbon atoms up one after another. Some carbon compounds molecules consist of just a few atoms. Others contain thousands or even millions. Also, no other element is as versatile as carbon in forming molecules with such durability and stability. Carbon is unique among the elements in the number and variety of the compounds which it can form. Over a quarter of a million have already been isolated and described. But this gives a very imperfect idea of its powers, since it is the basis of all forms of living matter. Science today is still unable to fully understand the capacity of the carbon atom. In laboratories, new compounds are produced every day. Currently, it is possible to talk about almost two million compounds. As it is known, the carbon atom is capable of forming approximately 1.7 million compounds. While the other elements can form a total of 300,000 compounds, carbon, in an extraordinary manner, is able to form 1.7 million just on its own. In conclusion, the carbon atoms form 85% of all known compounds. The question of how the carbon atom first came into existence leads us to another miracle. The carbon atom forms through a series of nuclear reactions in the center of giant stars. However, these reactions have such delicate physical balances that despite being a materialist himself, even the renowned British astronomer Fred Hoyle, who discovered this, was unable to refrain from saying that a super-intellect had intervened in physics. God has created the universe with a flawless harmony. In referring to a super-intellect, Hoyle admits the manifest existence of God. It very definitely cannot be thought that one day pieces of stone and inanimate earth gave rise to a living being. Some people, however, make just such a claim. In other words, they maintain that atoms came together by themselves and gave rise to living things by allegedly evolving. It is clear that this claim flies in the face of reason because atoms have no consciousness and thus no ability to organize themselves. For example, everyone knows that an airplane cannot emerge from the mixing together of aluminum, plastic and petrol. A plane only emerges when you bring these substances together in a conscious manner, with very fine calculation. Therefore, the existence of such raw materials as aluminum, steel and plastic is not enough for there to be a plane. A plane only emerges through conscious planning. Living systems are no different. A living cell came into being through inanimate atoms being brought together with a very special creation. Living cells' properties of growth, reproduction and the like are the result of a perfect creation, not of the attributes of their molecule. This is God's creation of living things from inanimate atoms. God is he who splits the seed and kernel. He brings forth the living from the dead and produces the dead out of the living. That is God, so how are you perverted?